Good morning, everybody. Aaron here with AV. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Good morning, everybody. Aaron here with AV Astronomy. Good to see you guys. If this is your first time watching, thanks for stopping by. Today, I wanted to talk about how to handle and cope with weird colors, color casts, or just weird colors that come from processing your image. And this is more of an issue I have found with digital SLRs. Some digital SLRs are better than others, but for the most part, if you're using a DSLR for your imaging, even with dithering, you're gonna have to cope with noise. And the more you stretch the data, the more of an issue it usually is. So we're gonna jump on the computer here and I'm gonna show you a few things that I do to help mitigate, minimize that, that noise issue and, and bring out the best in the data. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the Witch Head Nebula as an example. And we're gonna start with a stacked image. Okay, so I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna get this image stretched out to kind of demonstrate what I'm trying to help you guys out with here, okay? So bear with me, but here we go. Okay, so one of the first things I like to do is get rid of gradients and light pollution. So let's go ahead and do that. So something I do, I do this a little differently now. I still use the apply image, but instead of sampling a color, I have found this to be a little more effective. Go to blur average and it averages every pixel in the picture. Okay. And then subtract it out using the apply image under image apply image subtract do an offset of about you know 25 to 30 is fine and then you can discard this layer and there you go you've pulled up the light pollution now there's still some gradients in here but that's going to be something we handle next let's go ahead and give this another stretch just to see what's hiding behind the the dark there All right, let's flatten that out. Pull up some levels. We'll look, duplicate our layer. Pull up some levels here. Get this adjusted. All right. Look at this. Now, some of this on the edges are these are stacking artifacts. Some of these lines here you see are stacking artifacts. Um, I did this over several nights last year, but we can. Those are on the edge, so we can just easily crop that out instead of trying to deal with that on its own let's just kind of crop out some of these stacking artifacts okay all right let's let's work with this okay so as you can see there's already and this can certainly be stretched some more but there's already some weird gradients coming out so let's handle that then we'll get to these off colors um, that are really just byproducts of noise from processing and the fact that I was using a digital SLR, a non-cooled camera. I just recently picked up a QHY-165C and I'm just now experimenting with it and I can tell you just from playing around with that camera, there's a huge difference in the noise levels between the two. So if you're considering a one-shot color camera, definitely get one. And I will be doing a video soon on on one of those so here we go let's get back to the point at hand all right let's bring it out a little bit more let's go ahead and stretch it again so we're gonna pull up curves let's do another arc sign stretch Did 30 that time and let's pull up levels and bring the slider back move that data to the left okay look at this <laughs> 
Look at this. So we've got greens down here where it should be at least somewhat more of a black, some yellows, a hard line from a, a bad stacking artifact. And, you know, since then I've learned if you can at all possible, leave your gear set up and just put a tarp over it so that when you image the next night, you don't run into this issue because everything is aligned as it was the night before. So when you set up and everything's not exactly aligned as it was before and you set up and you do this over and over, you get these, these horrible stacking artifacts. Uh, I have yet to figure out a way to completely remove these. I mean, you can use some... You can get creative and kind of minimize it, but, you know, we'll save that for another tutorial. For now, we're just going to crop it out. We're going to take the easy route on that. Okay. Let's, let's get this looking. I mean, <laughs> obviously, the space, you know, the, uh, the cosmos is not green like this. This is all... A byproduct of processing stretching and that the noise that's inherent to the camera I used for this image the 77d so here's what I do I create a mask because I don't want to affect the nebula itself so go to color range and let's just sample the nebula there we go and let's add to the selection click the plus dropper because we want to make sure and 3x3, three 5x5 three, five five average, this should be fine for this. Let's select up here to this part of the nebula. Mm, it's looking like it's selecting too much. Let's go a step back. We don't want it to select. Okay, that looks better. All right. Let's go with that. Click here to create a layer mask. And then you're going to hold alternate left click on that to see that mask. Now you can see it's real grainy. And if you were to just use this mask as it is, you would come up with a really, really grainy image. So we're going to blur out that grain with some Gaussian blur. Probably two or three pixels should be fine. Two pixels is good. Let's do that. That smooths that out. All right. Now, as I stated before, we don't want to mess with the nebula. So we want to invert this. So hit Control-I. That inverts the selection. Now let's take another look here. Now in order to protect that nebula even more, let's pull up a curves layer, control M, and let's darken this just to make sure we're protecting the nebula. We just want to affect the background. That looks pretty good to me there. We're going to we're going to run with this and see what kind of results we get. Okay, so there's a couple ways to approach this. You can just straight up pull up Hue saturation, and probably the easiest thing to do is to target those colors and just desaturate them. You can play around with the hue adjustment and try and do the opposite. Um, I believe the opposite of green is yellow, if I remember correctly. So you would add more of a yellow hue. But I haven't had much luck with that yet, and it's something I'm still experimenting with. So for the time being, let's, let's just desaturate... There we go. There goes some of the greens, and you can. There's some yellows in there too. You can always oversaturate to see what how it affects. You see that? Let's desaturate that. The cyan's. Oh yeah, there's definitely some cyan in there. Pull that out. And blues. Let's see if there's any blues. Yep. Okay. So that's already starting to look more natural. Here's the before. Look at that. Look at the difference. And it didn't touch. The H alpha data that you see just creeping in here around the witch's head and up in here, and it didn't touch the witch's head itself, just the background. And we removed a lot of that ugly green, yellow, unnecessary noise, color cast, I call it. It's not really a color cast, but it's, it's not supposed to be there, <laughs> and it doesn't look good. So that's one of the things I do. So another thing that could help with this is actually checking to make sure your color balance is accurate. So let's do this. Let's add a new layer, and we're going to fill that layer with 50% gray, okay, because that's neutral. And you do this after you've gotten your, your image 
mostly stretched. I mean, you, you don't have to have it 100% stretched out to how you're going to have it in the end, but mostly stretched, a few stretches, so you, that you know you can pull this kind of tone. So Because that's what we're going to be going for. I'll explain in a moment here. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Change that mode to difference. And then on top of that, we're going to add a threshold layer. Okay. And we're going to slide this over until we only see black. So everything that's white is different. Everything that's black is the same as that 50% gray. So this is looking like a good spot here. So let's zoom in on this. We're going to do a point sample. We're going to take our color sampler tool here. And we're going to do a point sample of anywhere in this black ring. Hold down shift, left click. All right. Okay, so now that you've done that, we've sampled where 50% gray is in this image. Let's delete. Delete that layer. Your point sample will remain. You can delete that difference layer. And now we've got 50% gray. So now what we're going to do is pull up curves go to the gray dropper to set the gray point and you're going to click exactly on that that pointed uh, that pinpoint you're going to click exactly on that sampled spot zoom in as tight as you need to because that is the 50 percent gray now you'll notice this is going to change the overall color of the image but this should color balance it and then you can do further tweaking We hit OK, zoom out, it tweaked it a little, so it looks like I was pretty close to being properly color balanced. There's a, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a slight change, and there we go. So now that we have checked for proper color balance, we can move that sample, Just take it out of there, there we go. And you know, there's still a little bit of lingering green here a little bit, but I mean, to me, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with that. You can certainly do another iteration of what I just did to take that a step further and neutralize that out even more. And if you have a good mask, it won't mess with that nebulosity. So all the color and everything remains there, but the background, which we would assume to be mostly black or at least close to black, uh, will will be that way so these areas in the background that you're trying to get darker and look more natural you'll be able to achieve that effect so guys that is really about it with regard to removing off colors color cast weird strange colors in your astrophotos well guys that concludes the video for today if you got something out of it you felt like you learned something new and it helped you out please like subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you don't miss anything. Also, I've put some links to OPT telescopes in the description down below that will get you started off on the right foot. Anything from filters, mounts, telescopes, you name it, they've, they've got it all, and they've got the team of experts to help you out as well over there. Great place to do your shopping for your astrophotography gear. Also, I wanted to mention, if you ever have any questions or concerns about astrophotography regarding imaging, processing software, feel free to shoot me a message on Twitter or my email, which is listed in my profile, and I'd be more than glad to help. In addition, if there's something you guys would like to see a tutorial on, or if you have a video idea that you think would benefit the astrophotography community, let me know and I'll see what I can do. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Keep on looking up. Keep on seeking. God bless. And until next time, here's guys.